And so now we are recording and you can all uh, give your assent to that. And uh, I'm now going to make Martin the host and we will, uh, we will continue. And Martin, I'm going to uh, make the assumption this week that uh, we are all well introduced. So we'll use our valuable time on plunging right into uh, to Rembrandt. And uh, you are now the host. So enjoy everyone. Thanks. Thanks everybody for joining us. And uh, I really appreciated the time last week. And just to say a couple things that was said last time by review and for those of you who were not here last uh, time, it's, it's best to be muted. Uh, we have enough folks on the call, best to be muted. Um, you will have a chance to, to uh, respond at certain points, but uh, you can unmute yourself to do that. Um, and uh, last time I, I was uh, very clear about my uh, disclosure that I am not an art historian. Uh, actually, in, in my education, I never took an art history class, um, but I've had a lifelong love of Rembrandt and of the Bible and particularly the interaction of, of the two. And so that's what I, what I bring to this. And today, uh, last time we looked at Hebrew Bible stories. <clears throat> and so if you have a chance to look at those, if you were not a part of that session, uh, and I've, I've been pleased by the way in which people have continued to reflect on these things even after the, the sessions are over, which I think is uh, terrific. Um, today, we're going to look at Rembrandt self portraits and uh, particularly a focus on embedded self portraits. That is where Rembrandt embeds his own self portrait in uh, a work of art uh, of a biblical scene. And, uh, you know, just the self-portraits, of course, were, uh, <clears throat> for Rembrandt, a key part of his, uh, his work. There were up to 90 self-portraits. And some of them are very formal uh, paintings. Others are uh, etchings or drawings. And I say up to because sometimes it's not entirely clear if it was a self-portrait. Uh, and you say, so why do so many self-portraits? That's not something you're commissioned uh, to do. Uh, and, and, and I think for Rembrandt, it was just a, a way to, uh, of self-discovery, both as an artist and as a person. Uh, Socrates was the one who said the unexamined life is not worth living. And I think Rembrandt, in his case, I mean, how do you examine your life? If you're an artist, you do it artistically. And I think that's what, uh, what he was doing. And and uh, what's uh, particularly fascinating is just seeing these self-portraits over time and seeing how he uh, marks the, the changes of, uh, uh, in his life by his changing countenance um, in his self-portraits. Self um, a member of the church I served in Wellesley, Massachusetts was a part of a, I think maybe still part of a project. Over 40 years, she and her three sisters were photographed once a year by the same photographer. And it, uh, it's fascinating. And, the, and these, uh, that series of uh, portraits has, has appeared in a number of uh, museums. And I was interested in part because, because one of the subjects was a, a parishioner of mine, but they're fascinating in any way. And if you, so if you looked up somewhere the uh, uh, photographic portraits of the Brown, B-R-O-W-N sisters, you'll see that. And I mentioned that just because it, it, it's a, a way of chronicling something over time, it gains in, uh, in context and, and power in some, in some sense. And then, um, and then why an embedded uh, self-portrait? And, and Rembrandt didn't write about his motivations. Uh, he didn't reflect on his own work in writing, which leaves us uh, uh, free to, to speculate about what some of the possibilities are. I mean, what one is uh, as as simple as that he needed models to uh, for uh, faces. Um, and another was a kind of a, uh, almost like a, a, a some people have thought it was like a commercial um, move <laughs> that that it was to identify himself in the painting would be a way to um, kind of give himself a little self advertisement, as it were. <laughs> But, but I think the, the most, uh, and there may be something to those reasons, but I think the most uh, compelling reason 
uh, is that it, it was a way for him to interact with the biblical stories he was depicting and uh, uh, to put himself in, in, in those. So um, th there's a, one more thought before we go to the slides. <clears throat> there's a method of Bible study um, called the Jesus Scenes Method. And if we had a smaller group and more time, we could do that here because it's a wonderful way of approaching scripture. And the Jesus Scenes Method, you take a particular story and you begin by identifying who are the characters in this story. And sometimes you gotta, gotta think pretty hard about who might the characters be because they may not be mentioned, they may be implied. Uh, like there's a crowd of people. And so maybe, and, th and, you, and then you pick someone in that story that you want to identify with. And then uh, the, the leader uh, inter interviews the various people. So for instance, let's, let's take like, we'll be looking at the parable of the prodigal son. You say, who are the characters? You got the father and the older son. You got the younger son. Okay. Who else do you have? You have the servant that is, is referenced there. You've got the calf, <laughs> the fatted calf. Uh, you know, you have you have uh, onlookers and and uh, and the, and the like. And then and the, then you engage the story based on that 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 uh, particular person that you're identifying with. Um, and I think in his own way, Rembrandt was was doing that. Is, and it's interesting to see which characters he uh, chooses to um, uh, embody. Um, so let me see if I've got, this is always, okay. No, I'm, I'm ahead of the game here. There we are. Are we in the right place? Are you seeing? Nope. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Hold on a sec. So first bring it up on your screen and then share it. Yeah. Okay. Here comes tech assistance. <laughs> yeah, what do I do? That, that'll let you speak. Where's the escape? Okay. 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 Now go to Zoom. Go to Zoom. Right. Now do share screen. Share screen. I'm getting a tutorial here in real time. <laughs> okay. Is that it? No. Nope. Oh, yes, it is. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, okay. Go, go to share. Okay. okay. And we're in. Now, All set. All right. Uh, but if you double click on the image, it'll go full screen. Okay. Now you done it. Is that it? How, how about that? You are sharing screen. Yep, right there. You have a little I don't think you quite get it. Right there. Yep. There we go. Is that better? Ta da. Can you Perfect. see that? Perfect. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that, folks. This is not my long suit. Is uh, the, the, the technology? This not only do you have somebody who's out. leading who knows nothing about art history, you have somebody who's <laughs> technical either. Um, so this, this we're starting with this is a self-portrait, and and uh, although we're talking about um, embedded self-portraits, I'm I'm going to include a couple that are not strictly embedded, but but I I think are are really worth uh, considering. Uh, and even worth considering in terms of the, the relationship to the Bible. Uh, this is an early self-portrait of, of Rembrandt. He was 22 years old when he painted this. Um, so uh, obviously uh, with, with Rembrandt, light and shadow is key. Like what is the source of the light and what is being illumined are questions always to ask of these uh, pieces. Uh, and and the, the light is, uh, it can be many things. It's not just the, like uh, something simple like good and evil. It's, uh, it's enlightenment, it's, it's illumination, it's revelation. It's uh, the light of the world being uh, reflected. Um, so what do, you, what do you see here? What do you notice in this uh, 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 portrait of Rembrandt as a, as a very young, young man? I invite you to unmute yourself to, uh, to just give a thought. He needs Why? a haircut. You can't see his eyes. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. So black? Why is he hiding his, his eyes? eyes? His eyes hiding in it, right. Yeah. He needs a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <Tony. laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, why, why is he is he hiding himself uh, that way? As a young man, you'd think he'd 
you know, as a budding artist, uh, you'd think yeah. he'd, he'd promote himself more, but he's hiding in a shadow. That's it looks well, like the light is shining on his ear to show that he has some kind of unusual growth on his ear. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't know what that, or, or, or is that an earring? I didn't know what that was. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. uh, he, he was a bit, I think, a bit of a dandy uh, as, a, as a young as a young man, at least the other self portrait we'll see in a moment. He's uh, depicted as such. <laughs> So we, we don't, again, Rembrandt doesn't explain this uh, and you know what, what it is and what it is about being, I mean, uh, being a young man and to portray yourself. I mean, I think he, I think in a, a, my own sense is that in a very real way, he's a young man who says he's still in the dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there, there's a lot that he doesn't know. Um, I mean, I, and, I, and later we'll look at uh, his self-portrait as the Apostle Paul. We saw that last week as well. Uh, I think he had a particular affinity for Paul. And, and there, there are two passages, at least, from Paul's letters that, that come to mind for me in, in seeing this. And, and uh, uh, one is in the famous uh, 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians when, when, he, when he says, among other things, for now we see through a mirror dimly. Uh, but then we will see face to face. Now, in, in my in, 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 in immaturity, we see uh, in a mirror through a mirror dimly. And then the other uh, passage from Romans, the seventh chapter, comes to mind for me, where this wonderful kind of um, confession of being conflicted. And Paul says, "I do not understand my own actions." Mm -hmm. Uh, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. I mean, in other words, I think he's a mystery to himself. <clears throat> and uh, additional thoughts. I mean, that's just that's just my uh, take take on that. You may have some other uh, contrary thoughts as well. Does he paint himself as a in a mirror, or does he paint himself as you you and I would see him? Oh, I don't know. That's an interesting question. I don't know the answer to that. Uh, he had to, he had to uh, I think probably had some kind of crude mirror my, would be my guess, but I don't know that. And any other thoughts before we move on from this one? But sometimes they say that the eyes are the window to the soul. Yeah. Maybe he didn't want people to see his soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, if the eyes are the window to the soul, the uh, shades are down. <laughs> yeah my mm -hmm. first thought was he's he's in the dark he doesn't know yeah exactly where he's going yeah i think that's i think that's right he, he, he's uh, and that's a for a gifted young person a gifted young artist in other ways he was very confident but to to this is a kind of a vulnerable thing i think to say he's in the dark <laughs> at this stage of his life how do we know that he actually did <clears throat> use the mirror? What is what if this was his imagination? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't we don't know that actually. Um, okay, let's let's. Uh, let, I, I I love that particular piece, and I think it's just amazing. This a twenty two year old who. Uh, uh, now now this one <clears throat> is another self portrait. Very different. <laughs> And uh, from a uh, similar time, let's see, it was, a, well, no, I'm sorry, it was, it was about, about uh, probably seven years later. And this, uh, uh, th this, this is Rembrandt as a self-portrait, this is uh, thought to be his wife, his, uh, who's uh, his wife for six years, they were together, 10, Saskia, who was his beloved, who died in childbirth, and he never really quite recovered from that loss in some respects, but... Uh, uh, so what do you what, what what do you see here? What do you notice? What's, what's he picking? He up? looks happy. <laughs> yeah. He's not in the dark. He's very he's much not in the dark. dark. <laughs> yeah. Right. He's sort of looks like he sh sh it sort of looks like he's showing her off. Mm. Like, oh, look oh, at this, or look at her. Mm. And raising a glass, he's got a a large glass there of beer or something yeah she she gives that look of 
why don't you act sensibly, husband? <laughs> I think it's yeah, come on, as Rembrandt. Much, That's right. This is Rembrandt just as course. much look at me as it is look at her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, her expression is quite different from his, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah. He's being proper and he's being proud. <laughs> yeah. So this is, uh, yeah, and, and uh, this is uh, thought to be um, a depiction of Rembrandt as the prodigal son. Hmm. And, uh, and, and, you know, they, they, uh, the story does say that he um, <clears throat> wasted his life on dissolute living. And uh, so um, here we get the prodigal son having claimed his inheritance and uh, before things turned bad. And, uh, uh, and, and, and I, I, I noticed that, uh, first of all, the peacock, see the peacock there? It's like, it's, it, they're having peacock pie, which would be like <laughs> the ultimate in indulgence along with whatever that is that he's drinking, whether it's champagne or beer. Um, and these, again, the long flowing locks and, uh, and, 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 and clearly Rembrandt was having a good time in this, in these costumes. Um, but the other thing I would, I would point out that's fascinating here, I think, is that, is that they, they, they are, they were clearly facing away from the artist, right? The way they're seated, they're both turning around, okay. uh, in this, in this pose. And, and I wonder what that means i mean that that's that's just it's like it's like they're turning around for a selfie or something <laughs> um but their focus has been elsewhere they've been faced elsewhere uh toward the feast and are just just for a moment looking back mm -hmm. just for the i mean for the for the not the time it takes to paint a painting <laughs> to take to take a photograph uh but, but they're, they're, they're focused on the feast um, and, and, and only, only uh, this kind of little uh, glimpse. So remember, I mean, some of these stories uh, had multiple versions and, and the, the prodigal son story um, is in the 15th chapter of Luke. It comes... Um, <laughs> After the, it, it's in this whole chapter of lost things. You have the, the lost sheep and the lost coin, then you have the lost son, the prodigal son, so called. Um, and the, 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 the parable of the prodigal son is the longest of Jesus' parables, really by far. It's, it's more like a short story, it has uh, distinct scenes and, and uh, developments. Um, but this is, this is when the prodigal son is asked for his inheritance which was a great insult to the father because basically treating the father as dead, takes the money and uh, spends it on it's a dissolute living. Um, and, uh, but then as you will recall the story that he became impoverished and was feeding pigs, which would be a, of course a terrible thing for it, you know, uh, an observant Jew to be feeding pigs of all things, and uh, and 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 said to himself, I I, um, I I would just as soon eat the slop that the pigs are eating, so I could not be hungry anymore. So he goes to his father and and uh, and, um, and and entreats his father to take him in as a servant, not just not as a son, but as a servant, and. And so here we have a, a depiction of that moment <clears throat> of the uh, uh, the sun coming back. What do you notice here? And it's etching. Great humility. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Great humility on the part of the sun. Yeah. He looks like he's in rough shape. Yes. And there's no color. Yeah. Yeah, That's good. yeah. yeah and that may, may have been why he chose that medium, although we will see another uh, depiction with, which is painting and oil, but. Uh, yeah. 
and, and they're, they're, they're the uh, jealous other brothers who have been, who lived a, a straight life and uh, yeah. know, wonder, wonder <laughs> what, what's going on uh, there. Right. <clears throat> Remember the father had a feast killed the fatted calf for the, the son and the, uh, the, the older son wouldn't even go into the party and said, uh, well, why would you kill the, kill the fatted calf? I've always been loyal to you. And the father says, well, I, uh, I've, you, everything I have is yours. You, you have always been my son and will be. Uh, but I had to rejoice when this younger son came home uh, because he was dead and is alive again. So you see this this person, I mean, the, the younger son here, in contrast to that bon vivant, is uh, really um, downtrodden at this point in the story. It looks like the first person that's coming through the doorway is bringing clothes to maybe for the mm -hmm. son. Back good home. observation. That's a good observation. When, when the, the father says, uh, put, put on the best robe, Put 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 the best robe on him, and give him a ring for his hand. It'd be like the signet ring, the ring that would indicate that he was part of the family. Um, and so the servant is bringing bringing those. And, and, and which one do you think is the uh, old, or is the older brother even here in this scene? He may be the one looking on. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, the the one out out the window there. Yes, at the window. Yeah, perhaps. I Perhaps. think they're just their servants, and they, clearly the, the servant is the one who's bringing the clothes, for instance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wouldn't be surprising if, this, if the older son were not in the scene at all mm -hmm. uh, at, this, at this point. But, uh, but then we're going to look at a very different uh, uh, depiction of this same. <clears throat> this is one of Rembrandt's most famous paintings. It's in uh, the it's Hermitage related. in Moscow. And this is quite different. Reflect on that. What do you see that's 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 uh, that's, that's different here? It, it, it's in color, so it's yeah. Uh, there's there's that element, but it's still it, it's still it's, it's still very dark though. As you, it is very dark, but the um, yeah. And but where is the light? On the son and the father. And the father. On the father. Yeah. The, the light is in back of the viewer of the picture. <laughs> yeah. Right. 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 That's right. right. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go back to this other, uh, just to contrast it for a second. Uh, uh, look at this. The, here, the, the the father and the son are both kind of meeting each other in an embrace. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it seems to me. Yeah. That's that's uh, what I was going to say. The father looks genuinely you know exuberantly you know sad but grateful i mean it just i think there's so much emotion in the father's hmm. uh, picture here i think yeah that, that shows more than it does in the other one to me oh uh, interesting um this is a very large painting by the way it, again one of the disadvantages of of this format is you can't capture the sense of scale of, of, uh, of what uh, um, someone someone uh, talked about this as a very quiet this as a very quiet painting um, mm. does that does that seem like an apt description to you or is, is that not how you would respond to it well it seems like a very private moment I mean there were faint suggestions of other people in there but the light is on the father and son yeah. There's also mm -hmm. light on the face of the one standing with the other red robe. I'm wondering if that is the older son. Yes, I wondered if that was the son. He, he's got no. just a little bit of light on him too, and he mm -hmm. doesn't look too angry there, but. No, he doesn't. <laughs> the fact yeah, that they're I'm... both in red robes, I wonder if that makes the connection that it's the father's son. They, he, he likes. That, that's, that's, my, that's my guess is. He likes uh, red that the red robes are a way to connect the two. And um, the face, the faces, the look at the, the nose and so on. He's definitely father and son to me. Ah, interesting. A <laughs> family resemblance, as it were. Exactly. Just, just to offer a counterpoint, uh, I think the one lurking in the shadows over the father's shoulder 
is the sun. It could okay. be. Again, yeah. we don't. We don't. There's no definitive answer to this. The, the 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 one thing. I mean, it's interesting here. Uh, you may recall the scene with um, Isaac and Jacob, and I'm sorry, Isaac and Joseph, and the two grandsons. That 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 it was a scene of great tension that that was not reflected in Rembrandt's painting. And here, the tension of the older brother, if indeed it is the the one standing with the red robe does not reflect the tension of that moment. It's focused almost exclusively on the tenderness of the exchange between the father and the younger son. Yeah. The, the younger son is being more enveloped by the father in this picture than in the other one. It's, it's as though the father is enveloping the son versus in the other picture, it looks like the son is, is seeking doing the yeah. seeking. Yeah. yeah. And, and, I, 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 I note that it, the, the father and son are not, cent, not in the center of, of, the, of the picture. They're off, they're off to one side. That's fascinating, isn't it? That's yeah, fascinating. What, you know, what that means. And the, 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 the most shadowy person uh, way back there uh, is, is centered. So, you know. yeah, and Rob may be right that 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 may be the older the older son kind of hanging back in the in yeah, the yeah yeah right I and no, notice the 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 clothes that the younger son has are are, are uh, rags but they are they are um, finery that are, are have uh, um, yeah seen better than and, and, and you know got the one shoe that, that that barely has a sole and the other one that is yeah. Uh, falls off his foot. Uh, what, what, what do you make of the gesture of the father with those hands? Focus on those hands for a second. Okay. Well, he's, he's pulling him in. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. You're welcoming and coming cl close to my heart. <clears throat> yeah. He's bl blessing and I can't him. help but, but, but observe that this son is follically challenged, whereas the other one is not. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, what? Yeah, that, that's both. Well, uh, is there a little a little projection there, Terry? Or <laughs> no, I just you know, something that you notice. Yeah, and I I think I think that in this case, uh, it's it's not a fashion statement or anything. It's 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 in contrast to other depictions of him. Remember the where where we were with um, you know flowing locks here, right? And and he's uh, in in some way here is shorn, um, and I think uh, an, an, another way of indicating what is uh, well state he's in. was there some symbolism there? Had he shaved his head in in humility? Was is Perhaps. there some kind of um, of tradition that I, I'm I, I I don't know about? Well, just you know, the the idea of, of hair as a, as a uh, symbol of power. I mean, uh, from think of Samson, of course, the most famous example of his uh, power in his long locks. And I, I, I think here the, the kind of whatever the it, it looks like crudely shaved or whatever. Yeah, it, it's uh, uh, who knows? I mean, is it uh, did he have lice or disease or, or just or humiliation? Uh, it, I think it just. Um, uh, underscores um, the the the, the um, state of despond that uh, he's reached. I see him as touching him as as if saying, "It really is my son. He's alive. He's not dead." Mm. Yeah. I would also say that the light on the face to the right indicates that he's an important character and I'm still convinced that that's the other brother. Yeah, so I, that's really, that's, uh, that's good, Tom. Um, Henry Nowen, does that name mean anything to you? He's a, uh, a uh, wonderful author, uh, spiritual author, Dutch himself, a Roman Catholic, uh, taught for many years at Yale Divinity School. And then, and, uh, uh, but anyway, he wrote a book it really is an entire book based on this painting. And I commend it to you if you're particularly intrigued by this. It is called um, um, The Return of the Prodigal. And uh, I'm gonna read a quote from that book because uh, it's, it's really 
I think quite wonderful. He said he he's he's asking where who does Rembrandt uh, relate to in this in this story? Who who is who again? Where does Rembrandt put himself? And now in writes Rembrandt is as much the elder son of the parable as the younger. When during the last years of his life he painted both sons in return of the prodigal. He had lived a life in which neither the lostness of the younger son nor the lostness of the elder son was alien to him. Both needed healing and forgiveness. Both needed to come home. Both needed to the embrace of a forgiving father. But from the story itself, as well as from Rembrandt's painting, it is clear that the hardest conversion to go through is the conversion of the one who stayed home. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, so. And I, and I mean, I, I think, uh, although again, uh, this is all um, uh, subject to interpretation. I, I, I think that would argue for. This meeting is being recorded. Meeting is being recorded. Meeting is being recorded. Is being recorded. Could everyone check to see if we're muted? Thank you. Um, I think. I think that that. Now, his interpretation, at least, would argue for for bringing the older son into the picture in a prominent role, mm. uh, and and in, in in need of the father's blessing as the younger son, and and uh, and so he's kind of hanging there, kind of just uh, um, uh, just out of reach, as it were. Are Any addition? Yeah, I have, I actually have a question on the two pictures back where the one where the, he's supposed to be the prodigal son. Yep. How, how do scholars know that? Or did he did he actually have a diary and say that he was putting himself in this painting as the prodigal son? Yeah, yeah, so he, he didn't, he didn't have, uh, uh, so we, we don't know in any kind of definitive way. Um, and uh, I mean, so, some of the works were titled, I don't know if that, gave a, a clue in some cases but m many many times they weren't and particularly like the self-portraits and all were not titled mm -hmm. yeah but this th that one is, uh, you know you know i always said the, about biblical uh, when, when anybody says something about an interpretation that say scholars agree you've got to be suspect <laughs> <laughs> So, so I, I won't. I won't say that. Although, in this case, scholars agree. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, okay. but, uh, but but be skeptical when I say that. Something like Thanks. That. I was just curious if he kept a diary. Or now, this uh, this is this is perhaps my favorite painting, of, or maybe favorite painting of uh, of all. Uh, does this one look familiar to you? Um, <laughs> Yes, it's, it's uh, Jesus on the Sea of Galilee, and in a storm, caught in a storm. Uh, this this painting, by the way, mm -hmm. one way which you might look familiar, it was it was one of the paintings stolen from the Isabel Stewart Gardner Museum in oh. 1990, and has never been recovered. If you go to that museum in Boston now, mm -hmm. you'll you'll see you know, that the frame is still there, but not not the painting, and it's never been recovered. Um, this uh, I'm, I'm going to actually read this because um, uh, it's, it's a brief passage from Mark. And Mark, who is the uh, earliest gospel writer, uh, he's he's always uh, very direct and kind of just just the facts manner of of, of uh, speaking. But every once in a while, he throws in a telling detail that the others don't have, which is which is always kind of wonderful. So. Uh, this is the fourth chapter of, of Mark, beginning the 35th verse. He said, on that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side, the other side of the lake. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on a cushion. That's the detail again. Mark has the that Luke and Matthew don't have is asleep on a cushion. I just, I just love that. Uh, and they woke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Now, now this painting depicts that exact moment, right? Where they're waking him up. 
teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And then the wind ceased and there was a dead calm. And he said to them, why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? So um, what, 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 do you, what do you notice about, about this uh, painting? There's a lot going on here. There's, there's a patch of, it looks to me as if it's blue sky, which would suggest that the storm is going to pass. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and that is interesting. And, 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 uh, and this is an instance where the light and the dark are treated differently. Mm. Um, the light, I mean, with the waves and the, uh, the left side of the, the canvas, the, the light is where all the, the danger is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and, they're, and they're holding on for dear life. Yeah. Do you, but, do you see the? Uh, do you see, do you see the the, the uh, and, and these these are the twelve disciples in Jesus. Do you see the one the, the disciple who's uh, uh, vomiting over the gun wall? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and can you? I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little closer. I'm gonna see. If it would be a little bit not as in focus, but a little closer. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Good. Can you yeah. see that? Yeah. There's Jesus. It's an absolutely amazing, detailed, gorgeous. This, this, is, this was what was, hopefully is, <laughs> hopefully still around you know, somewhere. But this is a relatively small canvas. I mean, I, I, mm. I can't estimate what it is, but it's like uh, uh, 18 inches by 24 inches or something like that. This is not oh a gosh. canvas. Um, do, you, do you see the, uh, in, in this, um, the, the, the character holding on to the, um, what is that called? The, anyway, the, the, the rope in the center, he's got a, a bluish greenish cloak. You see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you see, do you see his hand up to his forehead? Bluish green. Yeah. It, 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 as if, if this were a photograph, he would be like slapping his forehead and saying, how on earth did I get into this? <laughs> Did you, do you see the hand on the forehead? No, I, I can't really. Okay, okay. Yeah. With one hand, he's holding onto the rope. The other, he's slapping his yeah. forehead. And that's the Rembrandt self-portrait right there. Oh, okay. Oh, huh. Stay. Yeah, I, I think he's holding onto a stay, which keeps the ma mast up. A stay, uh, that's right. That's the word I was looking for. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and he's right. Notice, notice the, on the left is this tumult. Mm -hmm. And on the right, no, I don't see this. In in the, in the darker area, it is uh, uh, it's it is calm. I mean, and Jesus is obviously the center of the calm. I mean, it's a very if if you were to take your hand and cover mm. one part of the scene and then cover the other, it's like mm. very very different. Yeah. Two, di um, two different pictures. Yeah. Two different pictures. Yeah. Two different pictures. <clears throat> and that's that. Uh, and 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 where does Rembrandt put himself? Right between the two. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. He, he identifies with both by putting himself yeah. where he does. He he's he's um, straddles. Um, mm. I mean, they're they're and they're even. Let's see. They're even. There's okay. six, six and six. Six and six. Right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let's see. I've got one. I, I think this gets even closer. I'm not sure we get much more out of it. Well, that doesn't work as well. Sorry about that. But uh, <laughs> now, I've, now, can you see over my uh, right shoulder? There's a painting that uh, that hung at Andover Newton. That uh, and on my uh, on the occasion of my retirement was I always admired this because I love the Rembrandt painting on which it's based. And this is big. I mean, this is like four by four or something. Four feet by four feet depicts the same scene, but a different, and there's not a Rembrandt self-portrait here, but a different moment. Look at, look at Jesus 
What's he doing there? Calming the storm. Yeah. And bidding the wind stop. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, right. Yeah, it's uh, and and he's uh, it's 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 a verse later. <laughs> we catch it. It's not the moment he's being woken up. It's the moment of the calming of the uh, of the storm. Yeah, but the other. Yeah. The angels up in the clouds. Yeah. Oh yeah, I didn't see that. Is this also a Rembrandt? Oh no. Let's see. There's. Yeah. No. Don't have those in Rembrandt. <clears throat> but, uh, any other observations you want to make before we move on? Okay. Yeah. Now uh, we have a. a a couple of these. Uh, this this is also a small uh, work. It's in Munich Museum in Munich, and and this is uh, the raising of the cross. Jesus the raising on the cross of on the cross. Um, and and there's Rembrandt right in the middle, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, putting himself there, wearing some very fine clothes. Mm -hmm. putting himself in contrast to Jesus who's just in rags yeah. um, and you know it's um, uh, why, why would he why would he do that why would he put himself <laughs> in that in that place I mean also just in proximity to the nails and his feet it's like he's 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 more than an eyewitness it's like he's part of the scene in a, a very intimate way what, what do you what do you what do you make of that i mean he's he and he's almost literally in the center of the center of the painting yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he, he's also wearing clothes appropriate for his uh, uh for the time that he lives and to, yeah. which is which was pretty standard in for those kinds of pictures but yeah uh, yeah still yeah. it's uh, this isn't Middle Eastern raiment, it's uh, Dutch raiment, Dutch clothes. Yeah, there he is, right? Mm. Wearing, wearing his Dutch clothes, yeah. Is he every man? Yeah, I think that's, ex I think that's exactly right. It's not, it's not, it's, it's like the, you tell the universal by the particular. He's standing in for, I mean, if you, if, if you were to make a statement you know, we were all there. We ever, you know, well, it's, that's 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 one thing, but uh, or, or aren't we all part of the human condition? <laughs> but another to, to actually put himself in that scene uh, and and to tell the universal story by the by the particular, I, I think. Uh, uh, and 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 his and his and his uh, culpability is it's. You, you, I'm sure you know the the spiritual were you there. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Mm -hmm. Were you there? I mean, that haunting kind of question. And here, Rembrandt is uh, is a answering that in his own way. Uh, it looks and, like this this other face is purely an observer. That he's kind of removed from what's actually happening. But the one in, one of the turban there. Yes. Yeah, you'll you'll see him in these others as well. It's thought it's thought to be, and again, the uh, uh, Joseph of Arimathea. Mm. All four gospels say the one who kind of arranged for the burial of Jesus and paid for the burial of Jesus. So it's, I mean, he, he looks like he's got kind of finery, like he's a person of means. But uh, uh, but also, I, I the other thing, and again, I I I wish we had a. An, an artist here who can reflect more on this, but just the, the, the kind of the line from the soldier who's, try, who's pulling to lift him up, right? The, the cross to, to leverage it up. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and Rembrandt is right at that. Uh, function. And this, and this very strong vertical line from the body of Jesus through, through that. Through there. Diagonal. Wow. Okay. Here's, um, uh, now here, here the other end of that story is the descent from the cross. This is, this is about the same size. It's uh, um, uh, it's uh, 
<clears throat> Jesus has died. And, uh, and, 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 and you see Joseph of Arimathea there, that figure, if indeed that is who it is, it is. turban to the right. Mm -hmm. And then where's Rembrandt? Well, once again, he's right in the center of the of the of the painting. Yeah, is is uh, I mean he's uh, as if receiving right. I mean this twisted uh, this twisted body of Jesus uh, on a, brought down on a cloth. But it's like Rembrandt is the one who's catching him or receiving him mm -hmm. with a, a face of of uh, I don't know what, how would you describe it? Agony, I think, but. Mm -hmm. both of these paintings were kind of have a sh shape of like an arch of a window yeah they're, they're they're i think they're painted on wood actually they're part of a um uh an altar piece i believe hmm. so okay. they're not it's, it's not a freestanding um canvas as much as it is an altar piece they're, they're not large Martin, i hate to interrupt can you look in the waiting room for Jan Asmus? See if she's uh, down there somewhere. I I, I did. I, let I, I got in. I got oh, in. Okay, thank you. Thank you, you Rob. <laughs> sorry, sorry if we kept you waiting. I'm glad. And I couldn't get back in. Thank you. Okay. No, no, no. <clears throat> what 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 do you what, uh, so you've got um, uh, Joseph of Arimathea there, and but what do you notice about the the again the use of light and dark here? Mm. Well, it's certainly centered. Yeah. Oh, the lights on 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 the center there. Yeah. With the exception, you know, Joseph's face is is shown, but every, every everything else is centered. And yeah, and I, and I think that I think that sh that cloth, that large white cloth, is a way yeah. of kind of focusing your attention on Jesus there. Yeah. Um, but there now, now here, now this, this is unusual. This is a, uh, an etching of that painting. Mm -hmm. I mean, our version of that same painting, but, but the composition is exactly turned around. It's like mm -hmm. looking in a mirror. You got Joseph Arimathea there on the left rather than the right. You have the, uh, um, the, the figure in the, uh, on the, on the, the ladder, let me go back. See the ladders on the other side. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh, reaching over the other side of the cross. So we don't know why that was, but it, this is an etching that, that Rembrandt made of that painting. And But where's Rembrandt here? And th in, this, in this instance, the self-portrait is, he's, he's that figure on the ladder. Oh, oh that's interesting. And and uh, and and he's kind of awkwardly holding on to Jesus' arm. In some ways, you say, "Oh my goodness, he's creating this twisted figure by the way that he's holding on to the arm." Um, mm -hmm. But I think that uh, that, that figure uh, shows a different approach to what it would mean to be there at the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. We've got Sylvia Field here. Let me see if I can. Um, this meeting is being recorded. Being recorded. Being recorded. Being recorded. All right. Now, now we're going to move to another. Um, I've got just a couple more slides here. We only have a few minutes, so I'm going to. Martin, one question about this. Yes. He, the women are not in uh, seen here at all in either of these. Yeah, that's interesting. And in most of, we remembered them as being at the foot of the cross when he came down. Yeah, that's that's a very interesting observation, Tom. I don't know what to say about that, but that's that is absolutely right. Now, yeah, here's Rembrandt again with an etching. This is a much more kind of crude etching, and uh, this is Rembrandt uh, as a beggar. Mm. He put himself in the role of a beggar and 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 although we don't know if he had a particular beggar in mind maybe beggars that he saw on the street in amsterdam or leiden 
in his earlier life. Um, but there, but the but beggars feature prominently in the New Testament story, and and uh, and the way that Jesus responded to beggars, and um, the, the the one parable that uh, Jesus uses a proper name in is is uh, Lazarus, who was a beggar and a rich man. And the irony is, of course, that rich men's names are normally known, and in the parable, there's no name for the rich man, but it's the beggar Lazarus who's given a name, um, which is a sign of giving him. Uh, dignity, uh, Lazarus and the and the rich man. So, so we don't know if this is that beggar, another beggar, but Rembrandt um, identified in some ways. Said, "I'm that beggar." Uh, uh, Martin Luther. I don't know if he knew this, although Luther certainly had a great influence. Hundred years after putting the ninety-five theses on the Wittenberg door, so. Who knows if Rembrandt was familiar with this, but Luther um, defined sharing the good news as one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. Mm. And, uh, and, and Luther then actually at the end of his life, his, his last words were, were all beggars, everyone. And Did Rembrandt ever consider himself a beggar at a low point in his life or not? Well, he, yeah, he, um, I, I mean, in some, some cases, almost literally, where he, uh, I mean, he, he lived high on the hog, at, um, <laughs> coupled with times when he was destitute and, and in great debt. When, when he died, the only possession he had was a Bible. Oh, right. So not to say, not to say that he was uh, bigger on the street, but, right. uh, but there, he had reason to perhaps identify with uh, those who were destitute. Um, yeah, it looks like, looks as if he's saying something. Maybe I'm over-interpreting the line that's his mouth, but yeah. it's just the scale, it's hard to tell. Yeah, and, 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 and Rembrandt doesn't have, seem to have any impulse to do what my grandmother's called pretty up uh, the picture. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, he, this, this beggar it, uh, is in tough shape. And uh, right. so Rembrandt is, is, is putting himself not just in a beggar's, um, setting personage, but also um, letting his own face reflect the uh, the challenges and hardships. Mm -hmm. Got two more here. Uh, now, now this is not a self portrait. This is and just to say that that uh, uh, this, this is a, a painting of the Apostle Paul Rembrandt painted and uh you know of course he has the quill there is writing he's pausing to think and which interesting uh paul actually did most of his letters by dictation but uh, here he's got a pen in his hand and uh <clears throat> and obviously kind of what deep in thought would you say the hand to the yeah uh, looking quite a bit like Jeremiah last in the last week, the, again, the hand kind of sh expression, hand on the forehead, sh expressing great uh, concern, angst. Perhaps. It doesn't. It doesn't look as if he's writing then, because his hand yeah. with the pen is down. Yeah. The table. The, the, those of us who do some writing know what that's about. Trying <laughs> <laughs> to figure out what's going on. It's a lot of holding. The pen or staring at the screen, and, uh, <laughs> lost in thought, and yeah. if he's anything like me, sharpen a lot of pencils, even though I use a computer. Um, <laughs> and then, and then, and then this, which we uh, looked at last time, uh, this this is uh, the Apostle Paul again, but this is a self portrait, and uh, how how different this is from. Uh, the self-portrait we started with, where, where the, the shadow over his eyes, you could barely see his eyes. And here, oh, yeah. his, his eyes are, are so expressive. And, and the wrinkles around his uh, eyes and forehead. Um, he was 55 at this point, which, uh, you know, in his, in his day and age, that was older than 55 is today. <laughs> Uh, he had uh, obviously seen a lot, and um, 
and you get a sense that he has a little bit more of a self-understanding than, than in that, mm -hmm. uh, that first. Let's go back to that. See if I can go back for just a moment to that first. Uh, there he is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the contrast between this and, and, and even this. Those are both young in his early life to huh, we're all beggars everyone <laughs> so that expression well um uh, we're, we're at five o'clock <laughs> is, is there anything that somebody wants to, that they just are eager to, to say before before we close that you're itching to itching to contribute here Yes, in, in uh, Rembrandt's defense, uh, he did include women in depictions of the crucifixion uh, quite lavishly in several of his pieces. Thank you, Terry. It's good to know. I'm looking at the, uh, the young men with the obscured eyes and thinking, an artist, what is more important? What is the most important sense? It's, it's the vision. Think of you know Beethoven lost his hearing. Uh, yeah. Is this symbolic that somehow that he has lost his vision? And yet when he's fifty-five, his eyes are very evident. Yeah. It's a mystery. Why yeah. should he go? That way? I, I alternate between wishing we had Rembrandt's interpretation and grateful that we don't. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, because it allows us to enter into this and interact with it in a way that uh, it, it, it was also like uh, Robert Frost was asked what a, a poem of his meant. And he said, what do you want me to say it again, only worse this time? <laughs> 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 so so Rem Rembrandt's giving us what he wants to give us. And, and uh, um, well, ne next week, same time, same station. We'll, we'll, uh, this is the, we're finishing now the second of four. Uh, next week, we will be looking at uh, his depictions of Jesus. And Rembrandt was fascinated by uh, two faces, his own and the face of Jesus. So we'll be looking at, uh, at some of the, the portraits uh, that he painted and the other depictions of Jesus along the way. So hope you can join us next time. Yeah, Thank yeah. you, everybody. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Thanks.